We're going to go through everything you need to know to get started with Adobe Lightroom. Now we're using Adobe Lightroom Classic. There's a Lightroom Classic and there's Lightroom. A little bit confusing. Lightroom Classic is essentially how Lightroom has always been. And it's the, the kind of standard Lightroom that most people are talking about. It uses your computer, your Mac, whatever it is to actually edit the photos. Whereas Lightroom, which is the actually the newer kind of type of Lightroom, is a cloud-based system. We're gonna use Lightroom Classic. I, I think it's better, I prefer it. You know, it's what we've always used in the past. And I think it's a powerful editing tool. We've done loads of Lightroom tutorials, so there are some on the channel already. This is gonna be getting started with Lightroom completely. And then we're also gonna do a getting started with photo editing video next. So once you get started with Lightroom, We'll actually dive into the editing itself soon enough, so don't worry about that. We're gonna dive in. I've actually got Lightroom running here. Now, don't worry about this. This is already my kind of main catalog where I've got all my photos imported, but we're gonna start from scratch. So you won't see it like this the first time you open it, but you will be prompted to create a new catalog. And here, I'm gonna come up to File. I'm gonna click New Catalog and we're gonna make a new one. Now you can put your catalog in whatever folder you like within your desktop. It doesn't actually matter too much because when you open Lightroom, it's automatically gonna open this catalog and the catalog ultimately is gonna be where we store all of our photos. And I'm gonna show you how we can organize them within Lightroom as well. So call it whatever you like. I'm gonna call this one getting started with Lightroom. I'm gonna hit create. It's gonna ask me about backing it up. I'm gonna skip it this time, but you can set that to whenever you like. Now, once you've created a new catalog, it's gonna open up like this in Lightroom, and that's gonna give you a nice, fresh, blank catalog. This is gonna be our main catalog where we import all of our photos. You know, everything's gonna come in here. We can organize it all within Lightroom. So when you get back from shooting, whatever it is you're photographing, you take your SD card, you pop it in the computer, you download the photos. You're gonna to wanna to create a folder system on your computer. Now for me, I have, and I'll show you, a folder that I simply call Photography. I have Raw and I have Finished. So the Raw file is where I then put folders with the Raw photos in. The Finished file is where I put the exported photos after they're edited. So within that Raw folder, I then create new folders named after whatever the shoot may be. So for example, Food-Cookies, Forest Portraits, Berlin Gap, Fuji, all things like that, Canon R6, Canon R5, whatever it is, a good naming system would actually be to use a date and then maybe whatever the shoot is, for example. But I've gone in with something which is probably slightly less helpful, but you could use a helpful naming system. Now it's important to have a good kind of naming system for your folders here because essentially when we import these photos into Lightroom, we're not moving the photos or anything like that. We're not actually kind of bringing the files and putting them somewhere new for Lightroom. We're just pointing Lightroom to these folders. We're just showing Lightroom where these photos are so that Lightroom can essentially make edits on top of the photos. So importantly with Lightroom, we're keeping the original photos completely intact. That's different to Photoshop. And when you export, it's essentially taking the photo, putting the edits that we've made on top of it, and then exporting that as a new photo. So you'll always have the old photo available. It's non-destructive completely. And then you'll have the new photo edited at the end as well. So it's a great way to work because you can always go back to those original files, which is not always the case with programs like Photoshop, for example, as I mentioned before, that will edit actually onto the photo itself and it will change its destructive. So you can't always go back unless you're careful and you kind of put in precautions. But Lightroom, I like the way it works a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and actually import some photos into Lightroom and it's very, very easy. Let's have a look at Lightroom here. So we've got a few different tabs up on the top right. We've got the library tab, which is essentially where we can see all of our organized photos. And that's gonna be, realistically, that's gonna be the, the place where we organize things. The develop tab, is actually where we edit the photos. So it's a little bit different. You can see things change on the left and the right here. And then we've got some other bits here as well, which for now, we're not gonna worry too much about. That's not really what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about organizing in Lightroom, importing, exporting, and actually editing as well. So up here in the library tab, we've got on the left here, we've got essentially some tools for organization within our catalog here. So all photographs, all synced photographs, and you can see there, but we haven't got any photographs in here yet. So we need to bring a couple in so we can actually start seeing how this works. So down here at the bottom left, we can just click import 
And this is gonna open up here, which is gonna allow us to see where we want to import the photos from. So just like before, when I mentioned we want to have a good naming system for our folders, this is essentially where we're gonna point Lightroom to these folders. Now I've created two folders just for this tutorial, editing tutorial one and editing tutorial two. Not particularly inventive names, but I think they do the job. So editing tutorial one, you can see here, actually opens previews of the photos here. Now these are raw photos, so that's great. So we can actually automatically have them all ticked like that. You can come down here, check all, uncheck all. We want to import all of them, but you could go through and not import all if you want. I always think it's good to import all of them. It's no harm. And then you can go through and sort them once they're in Lightroom. We're gonna talk about that as well. So they're all checked. We just come down here to the bottom right and click import. Now Lightroom's gonna bring those in and you're gonna see within the library tab, we start to see some photos filling out this kind of grid system. And you can see over on the left, we've now got some slightly different stuff. So here in this folders tab, we've got editing tutorial one. Let's import another one so we can see exactly how easy this is to keep track of. Let's import editing tutorial two. Again, everything is checked. Let's click import. And that's gonna bring these in. And you can see we've got these photos, they're coming in on this grid, but we don't have the previous photo showing now either. So you can see in this folders category, we've now got two folders, editing tutorial one, editing tutorial two. So we can easily keep track of what's going on. We can also come up here to all photographs where we can see every photograph that we've imported into Lightroom. There's things like previous import and things like that. But for now, we're gonna stick with these folder systems. I think it's a really, really good way of working. So tends to be what I do then is once I've imported everything from the folder, it's all nice and kind of arranged in here. We can come over to the develop tab where we can see these photos much larger. And this is where we would essentially be able to edit them. But first things first, you might want to go through and actually decide which photos are worth editing and which ones you don't want to work with. So it's very easy to actually do that. There's a few different things that you can do. You can assign colors to these photos. So for example, let's say that we really like this photo. We could right click. We could come up here to set color label. You could pop it as green for ones that you like. And when you click off that, you can see that photo now has a green tint around it to show that that is one you want to do. Now that's probably, I think, not the best way to do it. So let's take the color off. But that is certainly one way of doing things. What I like to do is actually go through each one using the arrow keys, so I can just cycle through the photos. And if it's a photo that you think, yes, I would like to work with this, you can press P to pick that photo. So you literally press P, and if you see now, there's a little white square around the circle. I can press P, I like that one. I'm not gonna use this one, so I won't press P. I won't use this one, but I will use this one. And let's leave it in this situation as just those three. So we've got three with the white squares that we've picked and three which we haven't. Okay, so that's great, but do you really wanna be looking at the white squares? No, not really. So what you can do now is come here, the bottom right to filters, and there's ways that you can actually filter these photos. And the easiest way, the way we've just done it here, is just to come to flagged. And now we're only gonna see the three photos that we've picked. It's gonna actually get rid of all the other photos that we don't want to look at. Super easy, super quick way of organizing those photos and just sifting through the ones you want and don't want. You can just go through with the arrows, P for the ones you want and do nothing for the ones that you don't want. Now, of course, once we've edited our photos, which none of these are edited, but once we've edited our photos, you still might want to make some revisions and think, okay, I like this photo better than I like this photo. You know, you might use different edits on different photos and, and like one better than another. Well, there's more ways you can do things. So for example, you can assign a star value to the photo. So in this case, I really like this photo. Let's say we've edited it and we really like it. I'm gonna give it five stars so that I know this is one I really like. So let's go ahead and just press five on the number pad. And now you can see that's got five stars below it down here. Now, that's an easy way to then go ahead and pick the ones that you want to actually export. But you can also come over here to filters, you could pick rated, and that's just gonna show you the ones that you've assigned a star value to. So you can do one, two, three, four, five stars. Or of course, let's go back to flagged, you can come here to the left where you've got collections, smart collections, let's open that up, 
and you can see we've got a few different things that we can we can sort by so for example colored red so you could color things in red to indicate something and actually be able to sort by that five stars so if i just click that now it's every photo with five stars now this won't actually just be this folder so editing tutorial one with five stars this will be every photo within lightroom with five stars however that's a great way of being able to sort all of the good photos in lightroom so you can go through them quite quickly past month recently modified all that kind of stuff so it's a really useful way of being able to organize things. I like to use the pick system, sort by flagged, and then use the five stars to indicate the ones that I'm, I've run. I've edited that, I'm happy with it, I'm going to export it. And then when I've edited all the photos in that set, I can just export all the ones with five stars. So let's come off the smart collections, let's come back to flagged, and we've got these three photos. Now, the develop tab obviously is where we're gonna be editing the photos anyway. There's a lot that we can do here, and it can feel a little overwhelming at first, but the easiest thing to do, to be honest, is just to go through each slider one by one. And a big tip is you don't have to use every slider just because it's there. Some of them, like D Hayes on this photo, for example, will not necessarily look the best. There's lots of things that you can do with editing. There's lots of ways you can go about it, and it doesn't always have to be every slider that counts. Now, I think what we'll do is we'll do a proper video on the actual editing of this because I think there's there's too much to go through with regards to this and editing and setting everything up and all that kind of stuff. So we'll do another video. That'll be the next video we do all about actually getting to grips with editing in general because there's a lot of kind of techniques, you know, white balance, highlight shadows, exposure, color grading, all kinds of stuff like that. So we'll go into that in more detail. But for now, this is a great way of actually organizing your photos. We can come back to the library tab here and we're still organized by flagged and we can see the five stars and it's super easy to go through and be able to actually export your photos. So let's talk about how we do that. So essentially what we're gonna do, let's assign five stars to two photos so that we can see how you would export multiple photos at the same time. So we've got two photos here, both with five stars. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold we're gonna click on one, we're gonna hold control and click on the next one, and that's gonna select both of them. If we wanted to actually select a whole line, we could click on one, hold shift, and click on the other one, and that's gonna select all of the photos between those two photos as well. But for now, we're just gonna select these two. So you can just click on one, hold control, click on the other one. We can click right click here, we can come down to export, and then export or we can click export down here if you're on the library tab. So if you're on develop, you can still export them. Left click, control left click on the next one and you select both of them, right click, export, export. That's gonna open this export window where we can choose where we want to put them and how we want to do it and things like that. So first of all, we've got the export location. Now, generally this is just where the folder is gonna be that you choose to export these. So we can click choose here you just navigate to the folder or create a folder where you would like to export these photos. Make sure you click select folder. And then you've got a couple of options you can put into a subfolder. So for example, that means Lightroom will actually create a folder within the folder you selected and you can name that whatever you like. And you can add these exported photos to the catalog. I don't really see the point in doing that to be honest. Uh, and generally speaking, I will create the folder I want them to go in. So I tend not to use these, but they're there if you want them to be, you can use them if you want. Next, we've got things like image sizing, so you can resize to fit certain sizes. Again, I tend not to use that because I like to have these as a good quality. Uh, and we've got other options for how we actually want to use the quality here as well. So if we come down here, we've got things like file naming, so you can rename them to certain files. I just use the names that the files are from the camera, I don't think that's a problem. But if you want to use a file name of some sort of naming system, then you absolutely can. And then we've got things like file settings. Now, I tend to leave them at 100% quality, but that's because I don't mind about the size and I like to have the option to bring them down in quality afterwards if I want to, or back up or whatever. If you are worried about the size of the files, because they can be massive, you can bring that down. I find 70 works really well. 70 as a, as a 
kind of quality setting is a good compromise between file size and the actual quality of the photo. If you don't mind, if you're just using it for the web or anything like that, you could bring the, the quality down even more and have a smaller file size. It's still going to look really good, but for print and for general use, I like to keep them at 100% because I can always bring that quality down later in Photoshop or, you know, if I pop up on Facebook, Instagram, something like that, it's going to compress it anyway. So I like to keep it 100%. And you can also make sure that it's, not, it's a limited file size if you want to as well. If you've got a limit, so for example, I know a YouTube thumbnail, I think it's five megabytes, it might be two megabytes. I think it might be two megabytes actually. So I can limit the file size to two megabytes if I want, so it's not going to go any bigger than that. It'll make sure the quality is set in such a way that that is the limit of how big that file is going to be. Same with things like resolution. I know Twitter has a certain uh, resolution level that it has as a limit and stuff like that. You can remove things like the metadata or you can include it. That includes things like the camera the photo was taken on, the lens, the settings. You know, if you don't want that on there, you can remove that. I tend to keep it in there because it's handy. And you can add a watermark as well. There's also post-processing you can do on the image. Again, I don't really tend to touch that at all. I think for most people, it's going to be about setting the export location. It's going to be about setting the quality, maybe image sizing if you need to, Otherwise, for the most part, I think it's worth just leaving it. And then it is just simply about clicking export and Lightroom is going to do the work. You can see up here in the top left, there'll be a little bar and that'll fill as Lightroom is exporting those photos. And it really is as easy as that. Now, I've not actually edited these photos, so I've just exported them. They will be JPEGs now, which is super handy. So they're not raw photos anymore, which means they're much easier to kind of work with in terms of posting to different places. And that is essentially it. And you don't have to save anything. It's all just in here is all fine. You just click close when you're done. Do you really want to quit? Yes, and it's all done. And that is essentially how you set up and start getting going with Lightroom. We can do a whole video, like I say, on the actual editing side of it. So before we get to that, because I haven't filmed it yet, if you want to see anything specific about getting started with photo editing, let me know in the comments because I will absolutely do my best to include that in the video. If for some reason it's too advanced or it's a very specific technique, we can always do a video about that as well. Later down the line, we can do videos about all kinds of things. So let me know what you would like to see down in the comments so that we can actually get that going for you. I will, of course, see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.